Okay. Uh, this is the beginning of everything. I haven't seen the board yet. This is mm. uh, from an older and ash board. Yep. Um, yep. Big shout out to Rich. Yep. It does beautiful work. Hello, Rich. So let's have a look at pop her latches. <laughs> oh, lovely. Okay. Let me put this one down here for a bit. Yeah. Then the board comes out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is one of his luxury cases so uh, of some sort so so if you were doing a tour yeah you actually might be able to get something lighter or lighter. have someone else carry it either way well that's the that's the goal of course yeah so let's start pulling things out yeah um from the sack o pedals yeah the, the big brown sack of dreams What's the wide what's the wider story is it stereo is it mono is it wet dry it is all of those things. So one, when we started this conversation about putting a board together, I thought if we're going to do it, I'd like to make a board that I never have to change. Of course, that is never the reality of these situations. You always want to change things after, after a certain amount of time. But I think this is kind of as close as I could get to thinking of everything I could possibly want to do tone wise, routing wise, right. MIDI capability. IO capability, all that stuff, and yet it's still relatively compact, you know, because I, I, I couldn't deal with a board that's as long as this table. Sure. As good as that would be. There's a lot to come out of this bag, I'm afraid, so this could take a little while. It does look like a bag from a 70s um, yeah. drug heist film. So there's a couple of things that I'm undecided on. Okay. So like these, for example, the, the governor or the freedman or the rat. Okay. It's going to be a, a choice between the three. It won't be all three. Okay. Um, so sorry in advance. No, 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 no problem. This is going to be fun. So what we'll do as well, I'll get you to, <clears throat> you can unpack your. Oh yeah. Another box yet to go. There you go. You can do your unboxing. Oh, awesome. On that one. Uh, Is it a bike? <laughs> <laughs> Please let it be a bike. It's a dinosaur. I've never used a pedal board with any kind of uh, preset capability. Okay. I, I've used modelers and such which have that, but in terms of integrating with like analog gear or semi analog gear. Sure. It's going to be a big day today. <laughs> You're telling me. Rather. Ungracious unboxing, but very nice. Ooh. Very, very nice. Classy. Classy. Okay, we'll be back soon. We've arrived at a layout. Now, Jack's been thinking about this for a long time. I have way too much. It's, it's great. So it looks really beautiful. Um, I've used the um, bone tender as a riser as here a just to keep this yeah, flat yeah. because nothing is uh, stuck Secure. down at the moment. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, this all looks very nice. Ergonomically, in terms of getting to all the foot switches mm -hmm. and allowing space for cabling and stuff like that, I think this seems to sit the best. We can close. Just take these off so you can see. That's what things okay, carry look like. Okay, there's space in the back there. We've got to get power. We've got to get a remote Lippy Two in there. Um, but it's, I mean, it looks fantastic. Um, How many pedals in total? Uh, There's eight up top, I think, and then five, five or six underneath. So more than loops. More than loops, but yeah. we. And what's your solution for that, Daniel? It is. Uh, we've got one of the old school remote loopy twos here, because uh, this will be going right in the front, <laughs> and we're going to have the um, the two fuzzers. Pre pre G three. Yeah, and there will be. A little bit of loop sharing as well so like occasionally there'll be two pedals per loop that will have to be manually switched on and off right uh what's next then dan where do we go from here so i i always do the power first and the audio second because things are tight it would seem okay just stick the pedals down but because we've got midi jacks and side jack inputs and stuff we're, we're going to mark the layout 
and then we'll just do one pedal at a time, make sure it's powered. We'll get the power, like run all the power first. Then once the power is run, we'll actually do the audio and then we'll stick the pedals down sort of one at a time, making sure okay. that we know that they're not going to snag anything. Uh, it's a matte finish on here, so things stick to this really nicely. Um, yeah, and I kind of, I prefer to do the, I mean, we could put just Velcro everywhere and that's fine. Um, I find that things like the 3M dual lock tape, pedal board tape, just with little bits of the corners actually work. Goes a long way, Work really it? well. So this is a preview into the absolute mess and chaotic disaster that happens to make a board look really neat and lovely. The mm. truth is some significant time has passed. Yeah. yeah. Why is that, Dan? What problems have you faced <clears throat> not, so far? It's it's not problems. It just takes a long time when you especially things with TRS cables. TRS cables are a pain in the butt. Uh, so there's a lot going on with this board. We've got there's MIDI to consider, um, lots of TRS stuff, obviously the two levels. So the way we're approaching it is I'm going to do the bottom part of the board first, get that all going, make sure that everything's happy. Uh, so we've got, yeah, G3 is in, the volume pedal, the, this is an expression pedal, which is plugged into the expression pedal input jack here. So the remote loopy 2 is in. And, and this is hand handling the additional loops. Yes, this is handling the fuzzes that go on the input. Yep. Um, <clears throat> you know, we've had the like another reason we've had to put this here is because we could only source a small TRS cable for the to put the uh, to right. switch the loops. So that's fine. This can go here, no problem whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, everything's going to fit. Everything's got to work, and you need to test at every single stage just to make sure that everything's happy. And there's no way around it. It does take time. Um, but we're getting there. The, so this you know, first part's done, the expression pedal's done, um, power's all stuck down. Obviously, you can see here as well, started to lay out all the stuff for the power. So the way I like to do it, so we have these little standoffs here, and I know there, you'll see uh, loads of boards where they have standoffs all the way along. <clears throat> And that's really cool. The problem comes when you want to change something. The way that I've done this and the way I like to do the boards generally is have enough standoff to make it look really neat, but not enough to make it impossible if you want to change something. For how tiny that is, to power all of this stuff is a very, very cool thing. So I'm very pleased about that. Well, it's the rule of thumb, right? no matter what power system that you use, and there's some really good ones out there, you just ha have to have a, a supply that has enough oomph to get the job done. Otherwise, <clears throat> as soon as the supply starts to suffer, everything starts to suffer. Mm. Um, so just make sure that no matter what supply that you use, and there's great ones out there, just make sure that you're not, when you add up the current draw from all your pedals, you need to give yourself at least 25% headroom on the on the current capability that the supply's got otherwise as soon as it starts to overheat it becomes less efficient and the the way it can deliver that power is compromised so daniel time has moved on significantly it has what's going on so i'm changing it a little bit i'm actually doing it in loop order to try and keep it uh because it's quite complicated uh, but if I do it in loop order it just means that I'll completely understand the signal path and it, it just helps so anyway show us under the hood just a sec that's where we're at under the hood so everything's all in oh no no audio down there yet uh there's this is in uh the this is in some audio um some audio so we're up to about loop four now right? this is yeah we're just doing loop four now which is the uh cornerstone imperium so take, take us through then. So you're going, to, you're, you're going to loop order. So now you're going to add a pedal. Indeed. So first thing I'm going to do, because I have space here, I'm going to secure the pedal. Uh, it's different if I, if I'm trying to 
put a pedal where I don't have space, I'll, I'll then run the power and the audio. But because I can easily get to the jacks, I'm going to I'm going to secure this down. The way I do it, I use a bit of dual locker, we call it pedal board tape. And you only need a little square like that. If you put massive big chunks on, it makes it so difficult to remove the pedal. But the little the little square on each corner is more than adequate. Um, so here we go. I'm going to put this where it needs to be. Such a hairy arm. You like that? Oh, I can see his arm. Is it full moon? There we go. It's on. So that's now on. So now what I'm going to do is run the power. So I've got my power going down this way. And then I'm going to run the audio, and the audio is going to go down this way. So if Sweetie that's sweet. loop four then, what's in loops one, two, and three? Right. Loop one is this guy. This it's, guy. It's going to be one half of the HX stomp. We'll explain more about that later on. So yeah, loop two is the rat. Two's rat. Three is the brown amps protein. And four is the cornerstone. Five is going to be the mythos Mjolnir underneath. Um, and that is it for gain. Okay. Take my power lead. There we go. So it's going to go there. So it's coming from the guts of the beast. Obviously, I can't get to because I'm a flaming corner. Whose idea was this? Are and at the moment, you've got all your little standoffs on. Mm -hmm. They're on. But not tightened down because no. you do that at the end, right? Absolutely. That's nice. So, the way I do it is sexy. like per loop, when I'm doing this, I'll pull it tight. Yeah and make sure that it's exactly the right length as it goes through so that when it's pulled tight um, everything becomes neat so like from here I'll go that make sure that's nice and taut and then same down here and then this makes a little trip I'm under here. Your apology about focus. The autofocus is only following your hand, so I'm manually focusing. Okay. Hence all the uh, hilarious bad focus. Am I right as well, Dan, that so far, apart from the stomp, everything else has been powered off the isolators? Uh, so we have two isolators here and the stomp. So the isolators are for the low current stuff, especially overdrive and gain stages. Mm -hmm. And then when we get to the higher current stuff, they'll all be on their own 10x outputs. Yep. So this is going to go through to here. And then I will get to this point here, loop that over. Snip that off. That's the point at which Danish Pete would shout bang. <laughs> right, and they just pop in the little holes there and then I push the tabs down and that's it that's connected now yeah so I'll run the audio up to here and then that loop will be done we've done this a gazillion times before but just explain very briefly the uh, evidence audio screw in solderless system okay I was using evidence audio monorail cable for years before they bought out the solderless plugs it's been my favorite patch cable for a long time. Since before this was all fields. <laughs> it used to be yeah. fields as far as the eye can see. But all there was was Normans. Copper braid and a solid copper core. If that's in focus, I'll eat my hat. Okay. Good. And I don't know if you'll be able to see inside the connector, but in there, you'll see a hole in the center where the solid copper core threads in and threads directly into the tip so what happens is as so i thread this on that's screwed directly into the core and i i know that that's a good connection i'll fold it over 
screw that on and that is now one end of the cable. Time has passed. You could many, say that again. Many hours. It is legitimately night. <laughs> Dan has put in a proper slog. So I'll show you where we're at. Everything is plugged in. All the power is plugged in. We're not testing anything yet. Well, I'm testing bits and pieces as we go along, but we've got to get everything together. However, all the power's done, all the audio's done. Now, once we've tested everything, then I'll come back and I'll tighten all these things up and neaten everything up and make it look gorgeous. Um, but for the moment, oh, man, it's, it looks so it's good all plugged already. in. Well, it'll, yeah, it'll look, it'll look proper in, in a rolly bow. Um, yeah, but for the moment, let's just turn it on and just see if so, it works. Uh, maintenant, c'est le moment de vérité. Oui. Uh, that's 7.30. Yeah, half past six, mate. Thanks. Here we go. Moment of truth. That's good. That's on. These are all... Oh, these take a they minute take a to, moment, don't they? The software is doing what software does, and the computer <clears> is doing what computer does, so this one should be good to go. That one's on. This, this is this the one I'm happiest about working because this can be a little grumbly with power, but it can. it's done. Yep, that's done. And then let's have a quick look underneath. Yeah, these are all on. It's all good to go. Um, three and four, there's your loops for that one. Oh, man. There we go. Well, I am extremely excited. Also tired, so I'm probably not um, exhibiting that excitement right now. But once we get in that room and any guitar sound at all is made. I don't, <laughs> even if it's a most puny little tone, once I hear some signal, I'm going to be very, very happy, boy. It has been properly but, epic, and Dan has uh, shown great metal. Oh. I don't mean Slayer. <laughs> he has. In, uh, in it. Well, let's, let's go and make some noise and yeah. make sure that everything works. If we can lift happy, this off of the table. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Uh, and once we've made some noise, I'll just take 10 minutes tie up, pull up all the um, cable yeah. ties and make sure it's all happy, but awesome. then you'll be good to go. Amazing. Rock and all roll. To Shangri-La. Indeed. Ahoy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What are you looking for? Um, nothing. Meaning. We are, Just we are groovy. Meaning. If you want to grab your git board, wow, look at that. Oh, that looks so good. Let's go to hidden preset. Um, I'm going to enable that. So I need to go into globals. All right, we're in the room. Dan here. Mick here. Jack here. So, <clears throat> board is done. We're just going to turn it on, check all the loops, make sure we're getting sounds. We've just plugged in the Matchless and the Victory V140, and uh, guitar straight into amps sounds thusly. Righteous. Good. Okay, uh, the first thing is the buzzers. So under here we have We've got the fuzzes under here. We've got the silicon, the focus fuzz. So in remote loopy two. In remote loopy two, yeah. which is done, done by the remote which is switch. Which the out of focus fuzz at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, is this one? Righteous. Pretty righteous. And the argonaut. Together. Yeah. 
Yeah, man. Okay. Ooh. Very nice. Very nice. That woke me up. Okay, so next we've got... So take us through the ATX Stomp Loop 1 and how that's working. Okay, well, before we get to that, we've got the Max oh, yes. as well, which is sitting in between Remote Loopy and the input of G3. Okay, yeah. So it's the only thing that's actually in line at, at any given point. Okay. Uh, which... So you can have like an always on compressor. Well, that yeah, I think that's the idea with this because this is such a great, not only compressor, but preamp. It's got the UA610 style preamp. Okay. So this comp I've set very, very light. It's not really doing much compressing at all. Right. And the preamp is just feathering. Okay. So I'll go from dry and turn it on and you'll see what I mean. Okay. So it's not doing a huge amount, but right. it just brings it to life a little bit. A bit of love. Yeah, and then the other side is a little bit more extreme. That's like a LA-2A type thing. So I think that will probably stay on most of the time. Okay. This will come on for the super. Nice. The super squish. Okay. Um, still kind of getting to learn that pedal a little bit because there's a lot in there, but sure. that's all compression needs I could possibly want or have. So, um, so that's that. As you rightly said, though, loop one is the stomp. So I wanted to do something which, as of yet, we don't know if it'll work, but I okay. thought an interesting way to use the stomp is to use its effects loop as well. So there are some effects in there that I want to be pre-gain, okay. uh, pitch effects, mm -hmm. wah, phase shifting, flanger, anything like that I want before all the gain. Then there are certain things that I would want after it, like tremolo, um, maybe some mono chorus okay. or alternative delays. So with the loop in, in the stomp, loop one and G3 will be all those pre-effects. Okay. Then we skip later on to loop six, and that's where all those post effects. Okay. Come in. Okay. Um, that's what I hope. Anyway, we, give it a go? we can try it, can't all we? Right. Yeah. So uh, I've just done. I haven't really tweaked any sounds, but loop one. Nice. So pitchy things. Phaser. Yep. Um, then there's a tremolo there, which we'll come on to later. Hopefully, sure. sure. It'll be in another loop. Okay. Um, and I'm aware that you know you can rearrange the loops in mm -hmm. G three, but mm -hmm. certain things I would want both active at the same time. Okay. For example, maybe having a phaser in loop one and using a volume pedal in loop six, for example. So okay. that's the easiest way to have them both simultaneously working for me anyway. Nice. Very okay. good. Okay, so that's loop one. Yep. Loop two. Loop two is the rat, which is underneath. Okay. Um, so, I mean, a rat is a rat. It's going to sound pretty cool. Indeed. I wanted something that's totally different than, you know, any of the other game pedals would give me and any amp would give me as well. So okay. here we go. That's a rat. That's a rat. That's, That's cool. great. Okay. Happy with that. Right. Three? Three is the Brown Amps Protein. Big thank you to Brown Amps for, for sending that out. Um, Mick actually put me onto this because um, I was after kind of the, the Nobles thing. Right. And it happens to be coupled with a really nice Blues Breaker circuit yeah. as well. I think some of these things will jostle for position because the Blues Breaker sounds great as the always on pedal. Okay. As does the Max. <laughs> as does a couple of the other yeah, things that we'll go okay. on to, but, okay. um, but the Nobles side is really the thing that I particularly like. What out size is that? 
That's the right hand this side. side. Yeah. Okay, so in three. And then it sounds great stacking the other side too, but you know that's all that's all to be tweaked with. Okay, right. Uh, do it, do it. Okay, we'll do it. We'll do it. Yeah. That's kind of all you need. Oh yeah. Gain wise. Yeah, yeah, that's there. great. Anyway. But then there's another gain pedal in okay. the next loop. So loop four is the Cornerstone Imperium. Okay. I really like this because, so it's the Gladio on one side, which is like their take on a Dumble um, amp okay. channel. The other side is a Tube Screamer. So with those four... Uh, you've got them all there. And the Rat. Yeah. And something else that's underneath. But <laughs> yeah, it's way, it's way too much, Dan. We really, we really overcooked this. Um, so I'll turn the comp off. The Imperium um, okay. sounds, and I'm not sure what the settings are, but Let's give it a go. sounds thusly. <laughs> Yep, and then the other side is... So, a lot more mid out of that pedal. That's really lovely. Five is the uh, Mythos Mjolnir, um, which I always had liked Clon type pedals. That's my particular favorite. It just has a slightly different character that's not quite as overtly mid rangey okay. to me. Um, so I really like that. That's my go-to lead boost, which is why it's in a loop after Everything. Oh, all those other game pedals. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'll just, have... I'll just tweak that to where I kind of know it should be. Okay. Just makes it very fat. Yeah. But if I pair that with... Um, uh, one of the, like, say, let's, let's use the protein. Okay, which is three. Yeah, having it after that, it makes a profound difference for lead sounds. Okay. Which I, I just kind of prefer that. It, sure. It's not saturating more is just it makes it bigger and changes the mid-range character completely lovely loop six is where it starts to get interesting because it's a multi-purpose loop so okay I, right. I, I assume maybe there'll be a diagram here to to help make some sense of this but it sends out to an external loop here on the side so that can be useful you know, used for effects loops mm -hmm. for cable method if i want to just throw another pedal in there that I don't have on the board, another gain pedal or whatever, that can slot into that loop. Um, <clears throat> so aside from that, it also houses a couple of other pedals. The other side of the HX stomp, mm -hmm. as I mentioned before, so mm -hmm. all of the post gain effects, and the UA Lion. Okay. Which is an astonishing pedal martial uh, replication. And the reason that that's there is sometimes I'm just not going to want to use an amp or in the case of all the stereo capability, two amps. Okay. So when I take this home and I'm dialing in these sounds, I'm probably not going to use two amps. I'm going to use that and be able to use it straight into a 
a DAW and okay. do all the tweaking that way. So it's just great to have that option. Plus some gigs, you know, you might not be able to or want to take amplifiers. No! Sorry, guys, but that's just the way no! I do things no! sometimes. Um, I'm guessing you won't even let me play it here today. You can play it. You can play it. Just play. We'll have to. Well, we'd have to reconfigure the routing and all sorts because it would have to go. So we can't do that today, but I'll show that another time. OK. But the fact that it's there. We can't hear it. Can we, can we hear it? We can find a way to do um, that, but we'll have to oh, okay. plug yeah, straight yeah. in. But, oh, okay. but just the fact that I've got it there is very comforting to me sure um to know that i don't have to rely on using an amps this amps this board will just cover me for any situation okay so that's the mono stuff now we delve into stereo okay so let me turn the stereo loops on um, okay there we go cool. so the last three panels are in stereo yes okay so yeah Great. So, okay, so the simple way to think about it is seven and eight is stereo modulation, which is the Lex and the Astra. Okay. Nine and 10 is stereo delay, which is the timeline. Mm -hmm. And 11 and 12 is the golden, so stereo, nice. stereo verb. I've never done stereo in this kind of domain. Okay. Um, you know, with, with proper pedals, if you like. Mm -hmm. Um, you're kind of spoilt for it with when it comes to modeling because it's there by default and it's easy to do. But just because of how powerful G3 is and how easy it was to do that, sure. you know, putting them in stereo, this will be the first time I've heard it. Okay. So I'm very excited. All right, let's give it a go. Um, do you want to start with the mod? Yep. There okay, so I'll, the only downside to this thing is I have to choose one at a time. Okay. So I'll have to manually switch on or off the Lex or the Astra. Okay. But, um, okay. But that's fine. I it's, can it's fine. accept it's that good. compromise. So here's the Lex first. <laughs> That sounds yeah. amazing. It's killer. It's killer. It's wicked. So okay. I just love that effect. I mean, as we talked about in the, the, the live video that we did, I think that's possibly the most useful modulation sure. pedal. Because with gain, with clean, it it's, sounds amazing. it's a real musical thing to, to interact with, as you were doing kindly on my behalf there. So then the Astra is your stereo chorus, stereo flanging, stereo tremolo. Okay. Um, there, there's more in there as well. But I think right now, haven't tweaked this, but we've got a flanger here, so let's see how it sounds. <laughs> So that's going to take some tweaking, but you know, stereo chorus or flanging and stereo tremolo is pretty much all I want from sure. a stereo thing outside of the Lex, and it does that very, very nicely. Beautiful. So that's the mod. Uh, nine and ten is the, the timeline, which I'm, you know, I know there's so many delays out there now that are uber capable, but mm. I just struggle to get away from that. Me too. Um, you know it, right? You can. Yeah, you exactly. Can, and yeah, yeah. again, and that's the same thing with me. I'm out inside out and yeah. I can just get into it so quick. But I've never used it stereo. Oh, dude. So these are just the sounds that I've had in there that have only ever been mono. Let's. All right. Let's blow my brains. <laughs> Right, 
Let us try this one more. Yes. Go on then. Something we've done here as well is, as well as stereo being the first time I've ever done that, uh, I've also never done MIDI on a pedal board. Okay. And that's a whole nother rabbit hole. Yep. But very primitively, this external foot switch for the stomp, I can tap tempo into this, which will tap tempo into this, which via MIDI clock will tap tempo into the timeline oh, cool. as well. Oh, very nice. Um, because you, you can accurately control BPM and stuff on there. And that'll feed through to... Exactly. That's great. So just to demonstrate that, because I know you were tapping here, mm -hmm. but if I was to... I'd better turn that on, actually, haven't I? I don't know what you've done there, but I really like that. Just the pattern delay. Okay. The pattern delay in stereo is lovely. So yeah, as, yeah. as is the dual, if you go to... Thank you, Dan. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, so the last thing is the golden. Mm -hmm. um, up until this point, I've been reverbless, which is quite a sad, yep. sad place to be. So I will always have a spring verb on. Right. Still kind of learning that pedal a little bit, but it gives the drip. Yeah, sure. And I love the drip. Yeah, we love the drip. Here we go. <laughs>
and that sorry that reverb uh it's either going to be a spring or that reverb there which is like a massive almost never ending hall okay that doesn't suck does not jack it doesn't it suck it does not and i can't thank you enough for putting this together oh mate it's, it's a pleasure it's lovely to hear you this, play this guy just spent about nine hours pretty much non-stop well we're, we're nearly there and i know the, got a bit of tidying up to do but i'm i'm, I'm but really i mean flipping sounds amazing lovely to hear you play um any combinations that you want to hear mick i i would suggest why don't you just dial some stuff up and have a play yep yeah and and you know have at it as uh, they would say across the pond yeah okay well dial some things in and then it's probably oh, let me get on a mic here it's probably right that um obviously it's the first time jack has heard this board mm. and these are not familiar amps to him so it would make sense yeah. for us to dial up some sounds now for you to go away and come back that would be nice for one day moment. soon yeah when you're completely across it all bring your amps yeah. And show us where you've got to yeah. and maybe reflect a little bit on um, what it's enabling you to do that you didn't have before. Have you got any thoughts on that so far? Like, can you, is it already feeling different than what you had before? Well, I've never had this much. Each individual pedal has never offered its full capability to me right. before. And oh. that's purely because of G3 purely because of this amazing board that Rich at Alder and Ash built as well with all the I.O. that I could ever need. Um, I've massively overthought this whole thing. <laughs> I probably only want like three of these things most of the time. Sure. So you're sparking then ideas wise? Yeah. Yeah, good. It's, I mean, there's nothing in there that I can think of right now that I could want to do that that won't deliver on. Yeah, yeah. right. That's um, awesome. Dial some stuff up then, have a play. Let's see, see how much fun we can have. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, Mick. Dude, thank for... you. That's amazing. Job done. That's amazing. Yeah. Cool. Certainly for now, because there's so much thought needs to go into this still. But um, oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. It, it sounds just epic. Yeah, you sound epic, man. You're such a beautiful player. 
Thank it's, you. it's lovely to hear your volume, actually. Thank you. With some loud amps and giving it some love. It's really powerful. Back. Happy. That was amazing. Thank you. Very Thank nice, you. Jack. Thank you. So we're really? back. Uh, it's now how much later? Two uh, weeks? No, a month? Some time more than that. Yeah, four or five weeks, I think. Long enough for you to have a Mr. Claypool going on here? Yeah. I've tried so hard in that time. <laughs> I took on board everything you've talked about. about. <laughs> so, yeah, I've that tried my best. And big brown beavers and stuff like that, yeah. <laughs> and really? while I wasn't doing that stuff, I've been learning this amazing pedal board that um that you helped me well I, you didn't help me you did it and um it, it's just the, the perfect embodiment of everything that i think i talked about last time which was that this board was kind of designed to just rule out any i never wanted to get to a point where i, go, oh, I just wish i'd factored this in yeah okay yeah uh, i'm not you know this this is no way in no way a claim that this board does everything possible it just for me, I couldn't think of anything else that this doesn't incorporate. Sure. F first question then, has anything changed? Of course. <laughs> but not that I've implemented yet. But, but have any pedals changed? No. No, so all, the pedals, changed. all pedals are the same. We'll just uh, prove that by doing this, yep. which is always dangerous in case you yeah. put your sandwiches or something under there. The only thing that has changed a little bit is I've made it slightly less sexy than you did, Dan, by adding a couple of cables here and there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I haven't... I haven't gone at it with cable ties couldn't and stuff like that. Lie, yeah. could you? you couldn't let it lie. I could not let it lie. Couldn't let it lie. Um, so it's now in the state that you know it, it was designed to be. It was only a couple of tiny things that were left to, to to figure out on my behalf. And now, I mean, just the way it's laid out, and because you and I spent so much time thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. In terms of learning it, there wasn't actually that much to do. It was mostly things like MIDI, assigning foot switches, making making the foot switches do what I wanted them to do sure. because G3 is so insanely capable uh, that, you know, it's not just as simple as stomp mode. There, yeah, yeah. there are variants therein and and then trying to figure out MIDI from it and all that stuff, all the stuff that you love the most, Mick, <laughs> was what I was um, trying, to, trying to get out of it. And I've kind of landed on that uh, at this point. So, so I can see we've got an expression pedal hooked up as well. Yes, uh, sorry, that, I moved well, it out. Pedal. Yeah, yeah. Shot if, that if, camera, yeah, there you go. You can just about see it in pedal cam now. Yes. If uh, Jack uses his very nice boots to uh, put there them into shot there. Yeah, so this may seem like an oversight, the fact that there's now another pedal on the floor, but the main expression pedal that's on there is, at this point, exclusively for the stomp. Okay. And it does so much for the stomp via MIDI. Right. I wanted to be able to control um the delay level on the timeline yep. independently yeah and I, obviously i could have figured out a way to make that pedal do everything but then i thought i'd rather just have it separately i'm not always yeah. going to want that there sure um, yeah. but when i do just just easy. in case you're not quite following that um jack's got the wet level of the timeline on the expression on the floor yes so you can do in the delay level yeah. what's interesting about that is there's a couple of our very good friends who do that uh as a matter of course, Andy Wood and Andy 
Timmons. Yeah. So now we have Andy Griffiths. You have to be called Andy to do this. And it, it's I'll, a really I'll great way. <laughs> it's a really great way to mix in your um, wet signal. Yes. And and so what would be the purpose of that? What, where would you need more and less wet signal? Well, in a couple of different ways. One is if this is being used wet dry, mm. it's invaluable to have that control. With stereo, not so much because the delays in the timeline, as an example, I kind of already got the mix exactly where I wanted it anyway. Right. The thing I love about the timeline is that the LED changes color when it's in the spot that you wanted it to be. So oh, if I put nice. it back on. So it, once it's green, I know that's where it was when I programmed it. Okay. And then when it goes orange again, I'm actively changing that's it. That's really cool. So I was really pleased about that because I, I knew exactly where I want the level to be most of the time. Okay. And I thought if I can't find that spot on the pedal, that's oh, really wow. going to annoy me. Can we can we hear a bit of that? You yeah, sure. Level. Let's have a hear. Okay. So, yeah, so here's just the delay exactly where I would have set it, typically. Is there a tremolo on? There is. Can we just turn it off for a sec? Yep, sure. Yep. There's also reverb. Would you rather do without the reverb? Or? No, I know. So then... The nice thing about this particular delay, I kind of crudely named that carbon because I tried to make it sound like my carbon copy. Okay. Which it does to some degree, but just by increasing the mix, it becomes a pseudo secondary chorus pedal, especially in stereo, which I love. So if I do that. And it's doing that because there's a bit of modulation yes, on the delay. There's quite a handy bit of that modulation. Sounds fantastic. It does sound epic. Wicked. What have you um have there been any surprises? We're we're gonna hear a load of sounds in a sec, but have, has anything surprised you or you've changed direction on anything? Um surprises in one sense was just how good it sounds. Mm. And I thought I'd had it figured out before because I've used true bypass switches and stuff like that in the past. And I'm aware of the more you add to your signal chain, not necessarily the worse it's going to sound, but the more different it will sound. Sure. Yeah. Plugged into this and it just sounds the same right. as plugging into an amp. Whether I've got a buffer on or not, whether I'm using two amps, however it's configured, it's just, it's kind of eerie that this wonderful unit just doesn't sound like it's there at all. It's Dan's main marketing problem. <laughs> yeah. 1,200 quid for something that doesn't make any sound. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, but there is such a value in that when you get your head around it. Sure. And once you accept that this thing that you've bought isn't meant to make it sound any different, it's only meant to add what you want to add yeah, yeah. Um, with no compromise. That was the biggest surprise for me. It was the tonal... It made me even think about the amps I own differently and how I use oh, different wow. guitars. So you had a, talking before recently, we've got to mention these amps. So I've yes. never been up close and personal with a Sir Badger before. That thing's amazing. Yeah, um, my favourite amp ever. Incredible. And But props to the Carlsberg 100. That thing's yes. amazing. Yeah, so I, I bought the Carlsberg just for a bit of fun. I didn't think we'd end up using it necessarily, but they sound killer together. Um, through your donor cabs as well. We did a bit of cab hunting earlier on to find the... Yeah, so these cabs are the Zilla, custom Zilla 112s that Paul made for me many years ago, uh, and they have WGS-12L speakers in, so WGS is EV-alike, which I believe is no longer made, but um, you, we like oh, them. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We tried a couple Marshall cabs before with um, G12Hs in, a little bit too brittle on the top, mm. so we've put these in a bit smoother top-end response that you like. Yeah, I just I like headroom. Yeah. I think, and that yeah, yeah. that plays into that. That plays into the fact that you know, there's a hundred watt amp there, and that's also what I like about that because it doesn't compromise your headroom. Sure. Unless you decide to implement a pedal to do so. And we need to talk about this because this is giving DSG. me the feels. Yeah, this, <laughs> is, <laughs> yeah, this is my my baby. At this point, uh, sixty four Murphy Lab SG. This was the last guitar I bought before I left uh, Peach earlier this year. And I'm very glad that I did. And it's kind of, it's one of those things you'll have heard earlier in the video, and I'm going to point this out as well. This is not the same guitar you would have heard earlier in the video. <laughs> that was kind of by design because uh, this guitar has a character 
Not that the other guitar doesn't, but this has such a distinct character. Mm. I've kind of let the board... Previously, I wanted to show what the board's character was. Now I just want to show how the board aids the character yeah, yeah. that's coming from the guitar. Yeah. I don't know if that yeah. makes any Beautiful. kind of sense. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so slightly different side of the same coin, but yeah, the SG is is phenomenal. Let's get into it then, Jack. Show us show us where we've come in whatever it's been, months, six weeks. Yeah, uh, so yeah. the main thing was getting my head around using a combination of presets and stomps. Mm -hmm. I was never going to go that overboard with presets until it's necessary, you know, sure. until a gig comes along that you require presets for every single song. Mm -hmm. So the way I've done it um, with your help was to utilize the hidden presets. So number one is my safety option because that is, as the name says, dry. That's no loops on. That's my safety blanket. If anything's wrong at all, I can hit that and I know that I'm going straight through to the amps. Mm -hmm. And then hitting that again gives me the tuner. Uh, from there on, it's pretty straightforward. So I just have a main sound, which is uh, the, both outputs in stereo. Mm -hmm with the delay and the reverb loops on, mm -hmm. uh, and loop six as well, which I'll talk about a little more in a moment. So all the presets really are just giving me different routing options. Right. Number three gets into wet dry or TPS wet dry, mm -hmm. as you dutifully term it, because it's, you know, it just makes sense. It's basically- That's not real wet dry, <laughs> man. <laughs> well, it works, okay? That's all you need to know. <laughs> it splits before, um, all the mods, delays, and reverbs. Right. Loop four is just a reverse order. So where is the, I kind of ordered the gain pedals um, to go from heaviest gain into lightest gain, which is not necessarily how most people do it. So that reverses the order of those. So oh, rather cool. than being oh, two, cool. two, three, four, five, it, it goes five, four, three, two instead. Nice. Right. And then the last one is just simply adds this on um, because there is a reason for that. In stop box mode, is it? Uh, it adds it on all the time. Oh, the okay. reason being that these two I very rarely use simultaneously. Right. So they are set up in flip flop mode. Oh, nice. Okay. okay. But just by having a preset with that on all the time means I can add this pedal to it if I want. Okay. Without having to have one turn the other off, if that makes sense. So sure. you've got basically all the options. Yeah, I read the manual. And I did everything that I could do. Um, so uh, there's five presets. That's enough for me right now. And then everything else is stomp box mode, as you can see, all the all the yellows. Let's have a listen yeah. then. We'll uh, flick yeah. through some stuff. Yeah, Jack, sure. we'll try and decode what's happening on screen. And then in a second, we're going to also hear the DI options as well, which I'm super interested in, uh, having yeah. poo-pooed them so heavily before. Well, the one thing I didn't talk about was loop six, which is the phantom loop that's always on. And that's half of the stomp. I think we talked about this before. There's currently a volu the volume pedal is active right there. So it's post drive, but it's pre delay reverb and all that stuff. Um, and the other thing as well as standard stomp mode, this foot switch I've used for MIDI CC for, for the stomp. So it turns on a harmonic trim. Oh, okay. Cause I don't need to turn that loop on and off. I just need to turn a function on and off. Sure. So what do you want to hear? Just the basic yeah, just, yeah, just sound as it is. That's something that a lot of people just like to get out of the amp. Yeah. You know, that's what people say. You like to push your amp to that point. A, you can't always do that, yeah. and B, you don't always want to do that because what this allows me to do, getting that first stage of gain from there, is that I can add stuff after it mm -hmm. and affect the sound more drastically. Because this remains open. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So it's it's great to push amps to that <clears throat> point, but I remember when we set the amps up in here uh, last time, they were just a bit too dirty for me. They sounded great, but I want to be able to manipulate the sound much yeah. more drastically, sure. um, And but that pedal, gives me that effect really easily. Beautiful. So that's kind of stage one. The other side of that pedal gets even more glorious because that's like the, the nobles thing. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
super tight, but also has the ability to, to clean up still. There's about 15 or 20 seconds of that where that could be no other guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can still hear the, you can still hear the guitar yeah, yeah, yeah. so clearly. It's yeah, yeah. so good. There's proper Angus vibes going on there. Yeah, and it's not too much it. gain either. No. That's that's the biggest takeaway. You know, there's so many gain pedals on here, but they're all very finely tuned. And that's what's taken, when you said about uh, what have I learned, actually, that's something that took some time to figure out. Mm. Where do I set each yeah. pedal exactly? Yeah. The rat was the worst because you move one control on that thing uh, half a millimeter and, Come on it, and it Come explodes. On Show us your rat. So the rat by itself sounds like this. <laughs> sounds wicked. If I put the Mjolnir on after it, it totally changes the character because it becomes really focused and loud. <laughs> So it, it's all about stacking, and that's something that I know people are, largely thanks to you guys, I think, very aware of now, how to do and, and the ways in which you can do it. But that was so important to get the right loop order, the gain levels all yeah. have to be right, the EQ has to be right. Um, having not played that sound through these amps, that felt a little bit weird. In like, what way? Just massive. You you yeah. you may have noticed Dan and I going a little bit at that Sorry. sound. No no no. <laughs> no no no. What what I absolutely love about that sound, loads of bottom end, loads of mid range. I think it sounded loud because there was such a great deal of mid range in there. Mm. Just no problem being heard. Those are all the frequencies yeah. that are absent from well other live guitar tones we are hearing these days, and they're just sure. all there, yeah. present, correct, and rock and roll. It's Glorious. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. And the, the the last game pedal I should really mention, well, I could talk about the others too, but the Cornerstone Imperium. Um, as I said, I don't really use it with the protein. It's way more focused than this. This is really big and broad and open. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit more direct and it suits this guitar very well. More for kind of um, that right on the nose kind mm -hmm. of typical Gibson sound. <laughs> as opposed to That's extraordinary. Isn't yeah, so that amazing. For for a lot of people you might play those sounds and they're they're, they're very similar. There's similar levels of gain, but it immediately informs the way that I would choose to yeah. play that sound. That's the sound we've never had on the show before. Yeah. And it is really, really, really fantastic. <laughs> I'll tell you <laughs> well, what I like. I, what I love about that is, you know, here we are using overdrive pedals and all the things that you would expect on that pedal show. That guitar is never sounding anything other than like than like a fantastic SG. Yeah. Yes. It's you can still hear it. it is you can hear all the character. Loud and proud and yeah. clear. And I think yeah. that's testament <clears> to you for A, not dialing in too much gain to the pedals. And B playing it in a way that it wants to be played. Mm. It's flipping cool. Great. It really it's, it's really great. Well, thank you. Can so, we hear the focus fuzz? Yeah, yeah, that was a great discovery as well. Uh, that was very kindly sent to me by the guys at Great Eastern, and I kind of, I didn't play it for a long time. It took a while to dial it in, but now it's just it's the best fuzz sound I could have for this board. It's really uh, hello, David. If you watch, David's, yeah. David's a good friend of ours. Yeah, so great. Thank you, David. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it sounds thusly.
Leatherneck. That, that is it. awesome. I take it you kicked that in, did you? I did, yeah. Um, Sorry, I've just got, I've got to hear that. I, I, I want to hear the focus fuzz with a strat, if you don't mind, just for of one, course, yeah. one second. I'd like to hear you play through these. I just, I'm, I'm, as, as you know, I'm a big fan of fuzz pedals. Yeah. I just, I like it doesn't really sound like anything else. Uh, it's got elements of fuzz face to it, but it's a little bit more polite. Than just want to see how it cleans up off the off the strap volume. Yeah. Pop. go sparkly but it's um thank you it doesn't go sparkly but it does still have a nice character to it when you turn it doesn't get muddy mm. it's that nice in between and so you can kind of you can spend ages going well i like this about that fuzz i like that about this fuzz that has as complete a fuzz picture as i could want to have it's really nice for just what having one fuzz pedal on the board and especially the way it works with the humbuckers as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remarkable. There's a ton of, but for for context, an absolute ton of bottom end. Yeah. But it's not getting swampy mm. or mushy, or maybe it's to do with the efficiency of those speakers in a way. But it's a lovely, massive, a lovely, massive bottom end. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed it is. And yeah, the Argonaut works really well with it too. Uh, so they both sit in the remote loopy, which is before G3. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's fuzz into octave yes um yeah so it's a really nice pairing so that, that's all the all the gain stuff really we will hear the black lion in a minute is it called the black lion the lion, the lion. yeah the, the so lion. I, you know controversial to say it but i've spent most time with this board playing with the lion right uh just di you know direct into my recording interface and it's the fact that this can facilitate that as well as yeah, working yeah. with we'll do that in a sec we're gonna uh di it in a minute. Before we do that, can we just hear some of the wet stuff or a bit yeah. more of the wet stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, um, did, or have we heard most of that already because it was on? We've heard some wet stuff. We haven't really heard any mod. Uh, so the, the Lex and the Astra, I've kind of found some new uses for particularly the Astra. Uh, this does a really nice uh, flanger, which I wouldn't have typically gone for first, but it sounds great. <laughs> Bringing the rock today. I am. You are bringing the rock today. It's, it's all in the beige trousers. <laughs> That's where it comes from. Um, so yeah, so those those are stereo effects. There's some really nice mono effects from the HX Stomp as well, which is all. Um, I mean, I don't know how much you want me to go into all that stuff, but where it's rooted across two different loops. So if I if I was to switch the preset here, um, so what this allows me to do now is have some effects before all the gain mm -hmm. and some effects after the gain, but at the same time, um, which you could you could get around it by reordering loops and so mm -hmm. on, but I wanted to just be able to have, so half of it, loop six, is after the gain, loop one is all before the gain. Um, so the benefit to that is that, for example, if I turn on loop one, the big, lush, lovely stereo Strymon 
delay after all the gain is lovely. There are some times though where I want to be able to do this instead. Which, which I can't do with the Strymon because it's way too lovely and it's post-gain. And yeah, it's, yeah. So, that's, so where was that delay coming from then? That was so, coming from the HX Stomp? Yes, yeah. that's a, a tape delay that's in the first loop, so it's before everything. Um, and again, that's being triggered with a MIDI command to turn... It's hard to see, but it just turns yeah. that block on and off. Right, I can see a, a light come on and go off again. Yeah, so it's, um, it's one of those... It's, way more than most people would feasibly need. But to have all of these options available and have them ready can just, you can stumble on something and then that which you would never have planned for before. Sure. And then suddenly you've got a sound that works. Mm. Um, okay, uh, let's have a listen to the direct sounds then because Jack, yeah, you yeah. were saying that actually the most use you get is at home direct so you've got the option to have two DIs that go yeah. straight into your audio interface, yeah, uh, which enable you to do recording and stuff at home. Yeah, I mean, I, the concept of this board being stereo was great in theory, and then I realised, oh, that means yeah, two amps all the time. That's yeah. not necessarily that feasible. But the the Lion um, has allowed me to fully to be fully stereo at any time, right? And and for dialing in those sound as you were saying about you know really the fine tuning of this gain pedal versus that gain pedal or so on i didn't want to do that through loud amps all the time sure because you just lose the context mm -hmm. after after a while so to be able to do it quietly at home at night and it still sounds great and feels good that's where the lion came in and that is an invaluable side of this board that i would that i'm very glad is on there I'm looking forward to hearing it about time we had a finger click isn't it yep and we're back in the room. Yes, oh, this is weird. <laughs> yeah, it is quite odd. Dan and I are sharing headphones, so we will have to swap. Uh, but so what we've got now is the exact same outputs. Yep. Are now instead of going to the two amps, are going to two DIs on uh, our recording system and just being recorded direct. So you're hearing. Yeah. The lion. Yeah. So the only thing that's changed on the board is sorry if I'm shouting. By the way. You, I'm going you, to try and you, I'm going to try and adjust. There, um, you there you go. Yeah, the lion is is now switched on, so it's in loop six. It shares that half of the loop with uh, the stomp, so it's all rooted the same. The presets all function the same, like we talked about before, mm -hmm. wet dry and reverse order and stuff. But it's just now the amp tone is that rather than. Yeah. And those. this is Universal Audio's new Plexi style Marshall, yeah. It is. Or all style Marshalls, or just Plexi. Um, it's based on a couple of different types of uh yeah. so there's a super bass and super lead yeah and then there's a very act super lead and presumably we have um selectable speaker simulation in here as well yeah yeah so i'm using it in a in in a way that i haven't heard anyone else use this yet which was why i kind of wanted to it's why i wanted to use it in the first place to see mm. if it could do it but with martial tone yeah having the cranked acdc thing van halen thing is great i love Andy Summers through a Marshall. Oh, I love yeah. those those cleaner, yeah. really immediate sounds. So my main sound with this is uh, a super lead, but really clean. So the the comp is still on, but that's the only bit of gain you're hearing is is that side of the max. So that's still on, right? Yeah. So it just it makes for a great pedal platform. Sounds like this. <laughs> And again, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> so that's not what most people think of when they think Marshall. Yeah. Um, what most people would think of would be what 
what I have the other side doing, which is a bit more raunchy. <laughs> So I have to cover my ears up because these are slightly open back and I can hear Jack's <laughs> pick on the strings, which is not what you want to hear with an amplified guitar sound. Yeah. Um, uh, they've got the mid-range. Really yeah. nice. Really nice and honky and woody. Yes. I heard lots of demos online. I've never heard it in my own headphones with my own reference. And uh, they've got the mid-range just yeah. right. And, and what I like about it is that if I... Um, so these two switches switch between the, the protein and the cornerstone pedal. Mm -hmm. And those intricate differences we were talking about before, they still come through with that. So before you play, sorry, Jack, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's put the top of the board down because the line's not going to change, right? Line's Unless not it change. goes high gain or low gain, which will be obvious to hear. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Um, so the cleaner and, sound is where I am most of the time. Yeah, unless you tell us it's going to the red channel, we're going to assume we're in the the green channel. I'd have to lift it up to do that anyway, right, so we'll great. leave it where it is. So every, all the gain you'll hear now is pedals on top. Yeah. I, I apologise for interrupting. No, that's okay. So clean sound once again. So that got a little messy there, but so the, sorry, I had to get the, vi the the delay up just because I yeah. wanted to hear it. Yeah, and I, I made nice. the, the reverb massive and you know, put the stereo mod on because then all the stereo stuff is is after the amp. Yep, the the amp sound. So for for me, it just meant that I could do all that dialing in. Yeah, the the detail is still there. It doesn't reflect exactly what that gives me, of course, sure. but. It's close enough that if I want to do some recording or yeah. want to try out a new pedal and I don't want to fire up an entire rig, mm. yeah. you can go in, into I can it. do it that way. It's um, right. it's closer to what many people watching will be familiar with because it might be that, well, we certainly know that a lot of people who either don't play in bands or don't play out loud, this is reality, right? You, you're at home, you can't shake the flipping walls down. And that just tonally is infinitely better than I think could be achieved with a very compromised amp miking situation. I mean, it's infinitely better than that. Yeah. It's not just a little bit better, it's infinitely better than that. Yeah, I mean, not that this, you know, not to turn this into an adver advert for the Lion, but like you said before, even about changing the speaker, yeah, mm. how much of an impact that makes and the amount of time that we spent earlier just getting the right cab yeah. in here, you can do that still, but it's just flicking a switch instead of... The thing that really putting you back I up. guess the thing that would require a bit more time in is I is totally weird for me to play the guitar and my body not be shaking. Yeah, yeah, like totally weird. Yeah, it uh, relies on some. Sorry, it, no, no, it, just and when you say shaking, you just mean I don't mean like f like f <laughs> ah. I, mean, I mean it being a complete sensory yeah, exactly, experience. Exactly. Yeah. But man, I'm I'm I, I have been 
secretly impressed with the lion in the demos I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. With one caveat, you know, it's the same thing that everyone always says about Marshall Plexis. They're like, oh, it sounds like a Marshall Plexi, cute Van Halen sound. Yeah. And it's like, there was only one or two Plexis that really sounded like that. Yeah. yeah, and they'll do that, but that's what everyone else did with it. And so I thought, oh, no, that means that's what they focused on. And yeah. they'll, they'll negate the fact that Marshall Cleans are amazing. Yeah, I, I love exactly, that yeah. green green yeah. side you have set up. And it's deliberately, it's quite thin as well. It doesn't sound massive, but that's yeah. because that allows the pedals to sound mm. like the pedals do. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, can I, just for my own um, shices and gigales, <laughs> can I hear, can I, do you mind if I just flick through the different cabs? Sure. That won't mess anything up. No, in fact, you'll hear it better if I go to okay. this sound, which is a little bit more driven, yeah. and then you cycle through yeah. with that. <laughs> That's nothing. Yep. Yeah. There you go. So for anyone who's new to this stuff, it just shows you how important speaker simulation is. This is with yeah. no speaker simulation, and when I make the next change, it will have a speaker. Sure. Actually, like the the no speaker one, like it's like a plug directly into the desk yeah, thing. Yeah. It's really well, cool. You, to be yeah. fair, you are plugged into a Neve Ten Seventy Three as well, yeah, so yeah. You're, that doesn't you're, hearing, you're hearing a little bit of it's that. It's not as horrific as it could be. It's very nice, very it's very nice. And what a great solution! So it yeah. means you can either be out to your amps, or you can be through that direct. Yeah. So yeah. you've got both, and presumably, if there are gigs where you need to do that, you can do that too. Yeah, and even if there aren't, there's a backup amp. You know, it's just a case of taking the cables out of those, putting it straight into the desk. PA, and, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a bit of a workaround, but it'll do it. Wicked, fantastic. man. Fantastic. Wicked. Yeah, it's a Jack, hell of a lot going on. But Thank you so much for coming back. Yeah. Have we missed anything? Um, I don't think so. I mean, uh, the uh, there's still some stuff, still some stuff, sorry, to explore with uh, remote switching capability. Mm -hmm. You know, it's if I have an amp with channel switching, it can do that. Um, I'm toying with having some kind of a, a DI situation coming off of the Max okay. so that one half goes through the board, the other half just goes straight out to go into an into, to record. So if someone needs a, just a straight DI. Yeah. Re re yeah, yeah and yeah, stuff. Yeah. 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 And that's possible. I just haven't done it yet. Um, yeah. But Matt, Dan, you just, you killed it with this thing because I can't think, I mean, obviously there's always going to be the temptation of other pedals. I made the mistake of spending some time with Paul Stacey and he introduced <laughs> me to a wealth of other drive dude, pedals that, don't do that. Yeah. I've got to try before I leave today. Don't do but that. I love it the way it is. Yeah. And, um, you know, if I can't get a sound, it's me. <laughs> it's not this thing. Well, you say that, but then the other great thing about uh, a modular pedal board like this is if you do want to swap out pedal A for something different, it's very easy to do yeah. as long as they'll physically fit. So if you want to swap this out for a king of tone or you want to swap this out for something else, you can just do it. Yeah, and, and there's a loop on the side too, which I, I don't know if I talked about before, uh, loop six. <laughs> so loop six runs first out to an external loop, which I currently just have patched with a little patch cable. Yeah. It comes back in. On, on the side of the board here. On the, yeah, so I can audition any other pedal I want. I can use an effects loop if I want to. It then comes back into the lion back into the stomp yeah. and then back into the board. So loop six is kind of, that's the heart of the whole rig. There's a lot going on there. But, but it also doubles as a guest loop, so you can plug things yes. in and try them out. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to do a board for someone who has thought it through like this and isn't making last minute changes you know, and calling me going. I feel, uh, I feel that's a coded message to, to people. <laughs> there might have been a couple of things that on the day it was like, oh no, no, we're going to do this. Yeah, instead. but we worked, yeah, we, but, but still, to have it, even if it's thought through uh, 80%, you know, um, it makes a massive difference. And man, what a treat to hear you play. Yeah. 
honestly. And to hear you play through amps you're familiar with and having everything dialed in. I like Rock Jack. Yeah, Rock Jack is, <laughs> we is, like Rock Jack. is serious. <laughs> Thank you. Well, very, very I need to cool. find an outlet for Rock Jack. I need to, I want to get a rock band together. For Are you sure. available for weddings and I gigs? I am available and... for any services that may be required involving six strings. No more than, no, no less, less than. than. Very good. You know very those good. glasses like they have on Men in Black? Yeah. Where they put them on? Yeah. Have we got any of those? No, like Ray Bans. Yeah. Type thingies. I want him to forget that he brought that guitar. Oh, yeah. Let's try. Like, you know. <laughs> it's, it's in my brain, this guitar, I'm afraid. It is good. Oh, yeah. It's a, good it's a beauty. Yeah. But thank it's you, guys. Thank you for being so gracious. No, man. Thank you. Having me been... back. Thank, thank you, you for too. watching. Yeah, and thank you, uh, Hades. Yeah. Uh, always always appreciate you, you gorgeous, gorgeous man. Um, <laughs> thank you for watching. Again, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Uh, massive thank you to our preferred retailers and to our patrons on Patreon and to anyone that's gone to thatpuddleshowstore.com and grabs the merch. Check out this lovely hoodie. I am, I am, it's a great hoodie. They're lovely and warm. I am just, how are you not dying? I am <laughs> sweating and hot. I oh, know we've been through this before. Looks too good. We've been through this before. Yeah. Um, Jack, do we, should, should we direct people anywhere to see what you're doing yet or are we not quite there yet? Still being fleshed out at the moment. Okay. But uh, I am open to whatever the music world has to offer right now. <laughs> if that changes, and when that changes, we'll put links. Yeah, we in, will. We'll update you. the links in the we description. Will. Brilliant. Groovy. Yep. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. We'll see you soon. Goodbye. Bye.